Hello, everyone. This is Jared from Pitch Hub, and I'm super excited for our special event today. We have a really amazing guest that I recently connected with. And as soon as I learned about her background, I just felt like this is someone who's going to be amazingly valuable to our community of video customers who are some new to video and some have had some experience with video, but we can all be better on video. So we all know we can be better on video. So when I met Sandra D. Robinson, um, I said, hey, this is something we would love to have you do some educational training for us and then share about your experience on how do we get better on video, better with scripts and better using a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. So Sandra D is here today and she is the founder of two companies. One of them being that we're gonna to reference today is Charisma on Camera, where she coaches executives and CEO suite on consulting how to be better on camera with videos and scripts and teleprompter. So I will yep. let Sandra D uh, give us a little bit about her background and thank you for joining us today. I'm super excited for this session where I get to be the guinea pig. So I excited. know. I was like, I said, you're very brave, Jared, because <laughs> in all honesty, people, when you're watching this, he has not experienced this yet. So I just told him a little bit about what we're going to be doing. And he goes, okay. You know, and what I love too is that Jared pointed out he's never been a professional actor. You even admitted, Jared, that you have some issues with like memorization and things like that. You prefer to work yep. from bullet points and talk that way. And it's really only been since you've been connected with Pitch Hub and doing so much of this video this yeah. way that you've been using the teleprompter. Yes, completely, yeah. 100%. So and I've, I've worked behind the camera my whole life doing more interviews where mm -hmm. we actually want people to not be scripted. So going into the scripted world is a little bit of a transition for me. So personally, I think we're at a perfect place for today. I think it's great. And also when you're talking about getting people comfortable on camera from the behind the scenes, you know how important it is to see somebody relaxed in their body and just looking like they are having their best day ever. And that's how I like yeah. to say that I, I let my clients feel. I show them ways that they can feel like they're having their best day ever if they have to present on camera, on stage. Wow. That's kind of you know how I want them to feel, not just that they can get through it, but they can actually feel awesome about it and want to do more and love the process. And so- well, Give people a little bit, well, why are you the expert on this? Because you've got yes. a long career on camera. So well, how are you the expert on this? Well, the technique I'm gonna show you today, as I shared with you guys before we started recording, um, this technique made me a lot of money. So that's one of the reasons why I'm I'm excited to share it with you. My background is is acting. Um, I spent many years actually was in front of the camera at the age of 11 and got my first national TV show when I was about 18 years old. And um, I played that role all told for nine years. And then I just in, in, you know, the way the daytime soap opera world works is we just hop from one show to the other. And, you know, you may if anybody has ever watched soap operas, you realize that you see the same faces. <laughs> so I was very blessed to work in that world for for quite a while and to even support myself in such a creative um man you know such you a have like tragic role. deaths on these shows i always hear about like oh, oh girl, she got in a car accident but she's back the, the girls that i played yes uh, yo i was hatcheted to death once i love that oh <laughs> yeah and that was considered one of the most brutal death scenes in daytime television it was on sunset beach and i think i, oh I saw the producers yeah i saw the producers at the daytime emmys and i remember they came out to me like oh my gosh and the character people still remember like she was a really popular character i had great fun playing her and they, they I remember the producers came back and we're trying to figure out how we can get you back and i looked at them i was like <laughs> we want to bring you back I was hatcheted yeah. to death when we can have like piece by piece, like Frankenstein. Yeah. What? But yeah. there's always a way. You can come back as your ghost. You can come back as your twin. There's. Oh, oh. there you go. There's a yeah. twin. She's yes. a twin. There's always a twin. There's always, there's always a twin. Look at how interesting daytime TV can be. <laughs> yep. There is no such thing as death in TV. No. But but it's there can it feel TV. like death when you move from the acting world to being yourself on camera. Okay. And that was very difficult for me. So I actually became an actor, so I didn't have to be me. Long story, I had a very um, kind of verbally abusive um, programming growing up in, in my home. And so I thought that my only way to actually be of value to the earth is to be someone else. That's mm. not a really powerful place to come from. <laughs> so, oh, no. Um, I, in the beginning, when I had great, you know, fans, I would have trouble even talking to them. So I teach what I teach, which is authentic communication and comfort and, and charisma and all of that, because it was not something that came easily to me. 
So being someone else, yes, I was good. Being me, not so good. I would actually basically fall apart. I mean, the worst stage fright, the nausea, the blanking out of the brain, um, wow. almost blacking out at certain times, like it was terrifying to me. Okay. So anything that I could do to help people overcome any level of insecurity or inhibition or just feeling like a fish out of water on camera, I'm more than happy to do. That's why I love to align with you guys and do this. So um, Charisma on Camera was something I started, as you said, in 2010. I now do, I have a, a horse powered consulting, which I just kind of took my authentic work with presentation and expanded it into more of leadership and general communication and effectiveness for, for CEOs. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. But this is fun. This is easy stuff for me. So the benefit of the reading technique I'm going to share with you today, it's multi-level. And this is something that has to be practiced. So I'm going to tell you, Jared, right now that this yeah. may be something that you pick up and you go, oh, I totally understand how this works. But unless you do put in a little bit of practice, it won't be second nature. Got and it. when it becomes second nature to read like this, that's when I started to make the money. Right. Well, let's talk could... about what what's the problem and then what's the goal. So yeah. that, that would just start there. The 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 problem that we're addressing is the teleprompter is an awesome tool. It's fantastic. The issue is that a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to have the words up there and then I'm going to read them and everything's going to be fine. Well, even for someone like me, Jared, I think when we first talked, I told you that one of my first TV hosting jobs for infomercials, they re they recorded the rehearsal. And I had this wide eyed sort of stare through the whole thing, completely unnatural, you know, <laughs> and I was like, like what? Hi, hi, let me tell you about this cool product, hi. Yeah. It was really creepy, you know, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. what is that? So I know that even though you read the words, sometimes that sense of naturalness kind of goes away. And what about and, all the, the nervousness too that people experience? It, well, the nervousness is compounded then because the reading of the words. And here's the thing about the words when you use a teleprompter, a few things can happen. You speed up because the words are going away. Yeah. Right? That's what your brain thinks. The words are going away. And and if right. And and so especially if I'm working with a really good teleprompter person in, you know, in an actual shoot, if they're good, they're gonna just follow. So the faster I talk, the faster the words are gonna go away. <laughs> it just becomes like, you know, kind of rapid fire. And yeah that's probably not the most desirable way yeah. to read your script. Uh, yeah. And the other issue is that um, the natural pace of things where there are pauses and there's emphasis and there's a lot of use of different, I call them different notes in the voice yeah. where you can kind of take your voice up and down. Suddenly people become more monotone. Yes. And they use less of those notes and yeah. they become more even in the way because the words are going like this so they're reading the words in the way the words are coming across suddenly it's that thing that i experienced when i was doing the infomercial rehearsal right it's like what is that freaky yeah. person doing so <laughs> and and what makes it worse is if you're already feeling a little weird when yeah. you hear yourself talking in this very unnatural way you think i'm 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 ruining this this is right? not going well yeah. This doesn't, this isn't going well. And then it compounds. It's like a, it's yeah. like a vicious cycle, right? Yeah. yeah. And you start, you can start sweating, you know, <laughs> it's like this whole thing. It's like a complete and disaster. Then you flub one word, right? Then you flub a word and you're like, oh, we got to go back. Oh yeah. my gosh. Right. And so the, the pressure just adds and it, and it really can be a downward spiral. So I am here to show a reading technique, the one that made me a lot of money. And the reason that it made me money is that I was able to pick up a script cold and be able to learn it in 10 minutes and go into a casting director's office, them knowing that I only had it for 10 minutes to go into the casting director's office and look like I was, as we call it, off book. So I would have the script in front of me, but my eyes were up connecting with the camera or connecting with the person I was reading with. I was available. I was in the room and I looked like I knew my stuff yeah. in 10 minutes. And so I looked like- and that's, then, To be <laughs> honest, that's exactly where our clients are at. They're very yeah. busy professionals. We don't expect them to spend hours practicing, researching yes. scripts that you know either they wrote or we're helping them create. Yes. And we want them to have some tools to get comfortable quickly. So that's, that's a, it. It's a perfect alignment. Yeah. Yes, it is perfect. And I totally get it. And it's the reason that they want to rely on the teleprompter in the first place, which is yeah. great. So yeah. what I'm going to have you do, Jared, is I'm going to, we're not going to start with the teleprompter script. 
we're yeah. going to start with a book. Okay. Because I'm going to show you the actual reading technique. Great. And make sure that there's no swear words or anything like that. <laughs> I'm going to bleep myself if there is one. Yeah, but I don't think there is one. Um, okay, great. <laughs> the worst thing is hell, I can see on this page. Yeah. I think we can handle that. I think, I think can we can handle that. Out. Yes. Yeah. And We've let's, let's make sure year, so we're, we're on the other side of hell now. We're okay. <laughs> let's make sure that we don't feel like hell today. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. So let's get rolling. So I am going to demonstrate, I'm going to explain the process and then I'm going to demonstrate what this looks like. Actually, I'll demonstrate what it looks like when we don't use the reading technique. And then I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like when we do use the reading technique. So the technique okay. essentially, in fact, you know what? I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start with how most people would read. Yeah. I was and, going to say, maybe do a cold reading. Yeah. And see. So, and, and it's funny because I actually, because I have made this second nature to me, it's harder for me. Yeah, it must be hard. I mean, I could try to do the cold reading. <laughs> but then you wouldn't really. Uh, let's, let's see. What, let's see. I want yeah. to see. So yeah. I'll do the best I can to read like, like most people right. would read. And so yeah. essentially, if uh, let's just say you're at a networking event, somebody says, hey, read this introduction for the speaker. You Sure. So you pick this up and you're thinking, I have to connect with the audience. Right. So you want to look up. And at the same time, I don't want to miss a word. And so you do what we call bopping. So that's the first term that we're going to be talking about is bopping, bopping, bopping your head right. up and down. Oh, so, okay. um, and this is, to, you know, keep in mind, this is the pre-work that we do before you get the teleprompter. So yeah. we're just learning the technique right now. So, so it's called bopping and this is what that looks like. And you've seen brilliant people do this because it just, it, it, it's how the brain works. You're feeling like you, your eyes have to be in two different places at the same time. So this is what happens. And I've just picked a random page in this book and I have no idea what I'm about to read. So this is how most people read. My friend's point was that many of us will invest in and fully enjoy some very meaningful, true friendships, but we shouldn't be surprised if, for one reason or another, life reshuffles the deck every so often. Okay, what did you notice there? Did you feel like I, I was connected to you? What I think you? you're doing is you're, you're trying to remember the next few words so you can look off the page, try to look at the audience, see if they're even still in their room. Right. And then come back to the book, jump back, try to remember where you are. Yes. And then jump back, read some, memorize a little bit, or, and then try to look up again. So I right. feel like that's the process you're trying to do. Yeah. And yeah. if, if and you- the cadence is not great. No, Let's because, be yeah. because my brain's trying to look up, connect, look down, connect, re catch yeah. up where I am. And, and, and would you agree that that's how most people read? Yeah. yeah. And to their credit, no one trains us on this stuff. We go through school, no. college. It wasn't until my MBA program where I ever even presented anything. So it makes total sense. Yeah. And, yeah. and there I was understand. no training even when I got to that level. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and to be honest, this is training that I've never seen anyone else do outside yeah. of that cold reading technique that I took with an actor, which was yeah. a gazillion years ago. And I don't think that woman is teaching this anymore. Yeah. So I'm just kind of running with my version of it and helping people out that are doing exactly what we're talking about today, using a teleprompter, cold reading it, it you know, intros and things at networking events and whatever. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to read, I am going to read that same paragraph so that you can see the difference of what it yeah. looks like. Okay. And I think I started with my friend's point, right? Is that where I started? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. Ready? My friend's point was that many of us will invest in and fully enjoy some very meaningful, true friendships. But we shouldn't be surprised if for one reason or another, life reshuffles the deck every so often. Though no one's fault, things change. As wise King Solomon says in Eccles Ecclesiastes 3, everything in life has its season, including friendships. So how I, did you feel yeah, receiving Way that? more, I mean, it's hard to turn off your season proness when I hear you reading. It's like, wow, your voice is really good. You're connecting, you're moving your voice up and down. And then yes. that really stillness at the end where you're just landing the last few words. Yes. And then that just like, like awkward silence, not for, not for, if I would try to do it, I don't know if I could do it as well. You're doing it like a little bit of silence, which yeah. I, I hardly ever hear people do. Well, the reason that that, and you use the right word, landing, that's the second word. So the first word that we're going to be talking about today is that bopping, what yep. you saw me do the first time, which is how most people feel I need to do both things and they're yeah. doing this. What happens is that the person receiving that, whether it's through the camera lens or whether it's in person, the person receiving that doesn't feel very connected because yeah. 
you as the reader aren't really connected. And so you experience that. The second time around, I was able through the technique to allow myself to fully engage with the words, trust that I had them to come up and you said land. That's exactly the term, to yeah. land. So you can see why as an actor, if you're bopping in a script and I'm, I'm doing a love scene with somebody and I go, <laughs> I really love you. <laughs> You know, it's like, I don't really uh, believe you. Exactly. <laughs> like, and so the receiving actor is going, this is not going well at all, yeah, you know? Totally. And, but totally. if I look at it and, and see the line says, I really love you and I land. Yeah. And that stillness of eye contact too. The eye contact. Eye contact is the thing that yeah. through the camera lens is going to make people feel that they are seen. The number one thing that human beings need really is to know that they are seen and yeah. heard. It doesn't yeah. matter if they're A-listers and I'm teaching people how to interview somebody that intimidates them. I go, you make them feel that they're seen, not just as the celebrity, but that's seen as a, as a human being. And they yeah. will pull out a chair for you and say, sit down. Wow. And then you get to really know that person. The yeah. same thing is what we're talking about with the, the contact, the eye contact through the lens. It's that powerful. So you want your audience to feel like they are really being in, you know, important to you, that you are yeah. fully engaged in connecting with them. And like, in saying that, I think, I think your technique is equally as good as a voiceover too, because some yes. of our work is voiceover work. So I and think equally helps. you're, you're helping them with voiceover work too, in, in this way. whole process also, because that's a huge part of video right now is, is voiceover. You're, you're so right. And I work yeah. as a voiceover artist and it is something that, you know, until just now, I didn't realize how much this technique helps me with my voiceover stuff. Yeah, yeah. You are so right. Yes. Because you learn a very relaxed way to read. So yeah. let me give you the, the gist of what this is. And I'm going to have you actually read okay. with the technique. Okay. okay. You're going to try and, and you're going to mess it up. Okay. Everybody, Jared's going to mess yeah. it up <laughs> <laughs> because that's why I was saying this is a practice. You get the idea of it from what we're going to yeah. be going through today. And the more you practice this, even if it's five minutes a day with any random book in your house, not a magazine. We'll see why, because my long run on sentences, it gets a little more difficult, but yeah. a book is usually the best thing. Not a cookbook, like a real book. Yeah, well, a, a, <laughs> a story. Yeah, yeah. A story book. yeah. So the Thank idea you. is, okay, in the very beginning, you want to look at the paragraph. I'll go to a, a second paragraph. Should here. I start looking? Yeah, start looking. Look at your paragraph. The idea <laughs> is to grab as much, and the more you do this, the better you are at picking up more words, right? So what yeah. you're basically doing is training your brain to trust your peripheral vision okay so as opposed to like when a teleprompter is speeding by you're looking at word after word after word and as it's disappearing and as it's moving you're focusing on that exact word when you learn to trust your brain you actually can relax and you read a lot more which is why the voiceover stuff becomes easier too okay so look at the first sentence the first few words or even if it's just the first one word as long as it isn't the okay so for here my next paragraph starts with the more i reflected so okay. i look at that and go i can remember that okay so i can actually hold in place in my book to make it easier with my thumb okay and at the very top of that sentence and i look and go the more i reflected yeah i can remember that so I start so is that a up. trick the, the, the finger, I, you know, it put is your a trick. finger on the place on the, tr on the page. It is a trick. Okay. Good, yeah. Good. That's a good yeah. Trick. So, um, but you know, you can't do that with a teleprompter, but during your practice, yeah. it's a way to, to increase your uh, efficiency and your yeah. confidence in the whole technique. So, yes. Okay. So I look down and realize I can pick up a few words there. The more I reflected. Okay. So I remember that. So I can look up and say, the more I reflected, go down. I keep my eyes down for the rest of the entire sentence. But you didn't realize when you're like, I feel so connected. You know, when I read it with the, with the, it's, it's so much, much more connection there. My eyes were actually away from you for most of the sentence. Most of the sentence, yeah, notice. Yeah. So yeah. I say, the more I reflected, my eyes go down on the seasonal nature of even the best friendships, the worse I felt about my original vision casting when we started Willow Creek end of the sentence, I'm back up. What I've done is my peripheral vision gave me the word creek and I saw the sentence there. So I knew that I could remember creek and I came up and landed creek. Got it. So my eyes stayed down. The reason that you come up at the end of a sentence is it's the end of a thought. Yeah. It's a place where you want to connect with someone. Yeah. And not just push words into their space. It's, it's, it's what we've been trying to coach people. It's like, this isn't, we're not trying to just have you force people words. 
They're no. supposed to have meaning. The words are supposed to have meaning, remember? Yes, yes. <laughs> and that is one of the reasons that this technique helps too. Because suddenly you yeah. realize, oh yeah, the structure of this, we started Willow Creek and I'm landing yeah. that. Willow yeah. Creek is important. That's the end of a thought. Yeah. Now, now from here, I'm in the inside of the paragraph. So I go straight back down. Okay. And my eyes stay down to the end of the second sentence. I was 22 years old and naive about friendships and how life works. End of the sentence, I pick up the word works, I come back and I land. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole technique. It is simple, but it will screw with your so brain. How many sometimes. words are you trying to, let, let's break it down. But how many words are you trying to not, how many words are you trying to say without looking at the page? Start with three one. Words. Could it be one word, three words, five words? Be one. It can okay. be one word. So I kept it really simple. At the end of this last sentence, I saw the word works and I came yeah. up. Now I've been practicing this for a while. Yeah, yeah. I can see my peripheral. Uh, so I can actually look down and in all, all honesty, I can see friendships and how life works. Mm -hmm. So I, I can actually flow into that and pick up four or five words and land and then come yeah. back. In the beginning, don't worry about that. Just okay. do the last word. And as the more you practice, then you'll go, oh, I can pick up two words. You know, instead of creek, I can pick up Willow Creek. And then and the more it, you practice, is it, more you can about the is it more about the pause or the emphasis? The landing. The, land the okay. landing. So to start connected with a couple of words, the more I reflected, bam, I'm down for the rest of that long sentence. That was a long sentence ending yeah, with yeah. the word creek. Yeah. But the second that I come up for creek, I am back in the room yeah. with you. With, with everyone, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I go back down, take the entire next sentence. Okay. And it is the middle of the paragraph. So at the middle of the paragraph, I just go down at the beginning of the sentence. I was 22 mm -hmm. years old, blah, blah, blah. How life works. Boom. Yeah. Back down for the next sentence. When I stood okay. and only come up at the end of that sentence. Now, as you start to practice more, there are some longer extended sentences that you come up against. And there are times like at a certain comma, you may be able to come up in the middle of that. But for right now, just come up at the sentence. Just come up at the end of the sentence. Right. And what do the you period. do with, let's say it's a three, like a, a comma phrase where you're hitting three points. We're going to yeah. hit one, two, and three. So, so yeah. So let's talk about that for a sec. That's, that's, that's good. Each one is a sentence. Okay. Give that so, pause. Number so one. comma is a real pause. You give a comma a real pause. It can it can be. Yes, okay. it can be. The more you okay. practice, the more obvious that gets. Like there was a comma in the sentence that I read, but it wasn't something that was actually um, yeah. necessary to land. Okay. okay. Yeah. You know, where I say there's a few things that I'd like to share with you. Yeah. Comma, right? Yeah. But yeah. and I'm gonna be doing that right now. So okay, so then it would be point number one. I go down and I can read it. And then I come up at the end of that, you know, and that's how you do that. Okay. Yeah. Point number okay. two, go down, yeah. read it, you know, um, you know, keep things simple. Yeah. Point number three, go down, you know, and that. So uh, each one of those is a sentence and you treat it as such. Okay. Got so it. it's actually, it's actually very simple, the technique, but because like you said, we were never taught to deliver words no. like this. No. So it's going to mess and with your brain. You've gone to like a Toastmasters and I don't even know if they teach it as they well don't. as you're teaching it. Yeah, they teach you, you know, pure yeah. memorization, but this helps yeah. memorization. So if you have to memorize, this is actually something that helps you understand the structure and the meaning. Yeah. So because you're okay. looking at the, you're land, you're actually practicing landing on the, the points uh, that are, at, you know, the, the periods, you're actually yeah. practicing landing the stuff that is most important. So you actually, your brain starts to pick up the flow of everything a lot easier than just trying to learn the words. All right, should I give, should I give it a try? Give it a try. Okay. So <laughs> grab a couple of words at the beginning of your paragraph, whatever you think yeah. you can handle, even if it's only one word, deliver okay. that up and then go back down and stay on that paper until you hit the paragraph. And if your eyes pop up in the middle of it, I will say bop. Okay. Bop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. So anyhow, I walked over to the store and drank start a beer. Up. Start up with, so anyhow, oh, start you can remember up. that. Yeah. Start up. So okay. anyhow. Okay. And then go down. Okay. Okay. So anyhow, I walked over to the store and drank a beer on the way. I knew it was getting late. There's supposed Land to that. Not go back. We're see. This is how we're going to go slow. So no, <laughs> that was good. good. So anyhow, blah 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 along the okay. way. So really land. Like I don't care if you exaggerate in the beginning. It's actually a okay. good thing to exaggerate the landing so that okay. you go bam. Bring I'm in. here. Rather yes. than initially. Okay. Yeah. So exaggerate it while we're practicing. Okay, so go ahead, pick up that first couple words and then go back down. Okay. So anyhow. <laughs> <All right. laughs>
<laughs> it's good. I, I don't actually usually feel like this. this is a good deal. <laughs> like, no, this is people. great. I realize I'm learning because I'm trying. Yes. Yeah. Right. So anyhow, I walked over to the store and drank a beer on the way. I knew it was getting late. They're not supposed to sell beer after midnight. Excellent. That was great. Okay. That was great. So I mean, go I ahead. Keep going, but like, yeah, keep keep uh, going. Keep going. And you don't, by the way, Jared, you have not memorized this. You haven't read this book. No, no, like, I flip to a page in this yeah, book. Yeah, a random page. Okay, so I just yeah. want to point that this out. Is that not this is a not a big demonstration. No. Okay. No, no, <laughs> okay. No, no. I'm a terrible memorization person. I, I can barely remember names. So, uh, so try it again. Start another, start another uh, okay. sentence or paragraph. But I went to high school with this old boy who owns uh, it. Start up. I want to see you landing, like okay. starting off a little bit more like whatever. What are the first couple words there? But I went. But I went to. Okay. So start with that up and then go down. Okay. But I went to high school with this old boy who owns the store. He always lets me have it for free. Keep going. Okay. Well, I got over there and he Bob. always was there. Oh, I bopped. Okay. Yep. All right. See? Uh, it's a shorter sentence, so I didn't know That's if okay. I was supposed to look down, look up. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I got over there, and he wasn't there. That's it fine. It was almost one o'clock in the morning. I saw this girl sitting behind the counter, and hell, I didn't know her. Great. And you know, somebody who looks like me coming in on her at that hour of night. That was a bop. That was a bop. Okay. Yep. Stay down. You know. And you know, someone who looks like me coming in on her at that hour of the night. Good. How does it feel? It feels new. It doesn't yes. go comfortable at all. Yes. Because I'm, my brain is like, do this, do that, do this, do that. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, it's, it's it, tricky. It feels better than just like how I would read it, which would be, so anyhow, I walked over the store and drank a beer on the way. I knew it was getting late. Like I, I, I'm losing any kind of flow if I just try to read. Read it straight. I can feel yeah. that. Yeah, I, I'm just. I can feel it. Yeah, and I'm not comfortable enough with the material to try to know it anyway because it's brand new. But what I like is that you are picking up more than one word at the end of the sentence. So I want people to see that that you started yeah. off like how many words, and then you're actually picking up two you, or three. You can do a little phrase at the end. You can yeah. catch a little phrase at the end. Yeah, you can, and then you deliver that right, and you're finding oh, it's not that hard for my per to, for me to trust my peripheral vision and see the end of the sentence and just deliver that upwards and then but this yeah. is where since it's so new you deliver it and then your brain goes you got to go back down oh okay you know <laughs> you're, no, totally. you're still, you're like, still talking yourself yeah. through the process i'm trying i'm trying yeah. Um, yeah all right let me try again i didn't figure she'd let me have it but i wanted some beer that felt weird i was like yeah. trying to because come back up on because beer. you bought so i want you to start i didn't figure and then you can go go down try that okay Start I up didn't with. figure she let me have it, but I wanted some beer. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. I was going to go back home and, oh yeah, this isn't politically correct. Let me switch. <laughs> 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 right, I'm going to jump that into here. Um, Don't get us in trouble here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I picked the wrong book. Um, God. You can even there. choose the, okay. uh, the comments on the back, back, uh, Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Back of the book. Matt told him to open his mouth and close his eyes, and he'd just give him a big surprise. And just as he was about to try and jam the coward in, Thomas clamped down on his hand like a dog that hadn't eaten in about a week, and started gnawing at it for all he was worth. Okay. So I love that you landed that really solid for all he was worth. Yeah. And see when there is a slight pause, this also teaches the value of a pause. You pause yeah. just enough. Yeah, let's and talk that, about the value of the pause, right? Yes, yes. And that's why when you're reading a teleprompter, people tend to, their natural thing is to just completely eliminate the pauses because they're yeah. so busy reading words. I know I was so busy reading the words that day that I looked like a deer in the headlights that there were no pauses whatsoever in what I did. And it was part of what made me look like such a weirdo. Um, so I get it. I get how easy it is to do that. But the power of that pause is that whenever there is a silence, your brain naturally repeats what you just heard. Okay. 
So when so I paused, you, you just heard again. It's like a sponge, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when I said what you just heard and I stopped, your brain just repeated what you just heard. Yes. Like this literally. is the technique we use with the kids saying, don't grab that knife. And the first thing they hear, the last thing they hear. Grab is the grab knife. knife. Yeah. Yeah. So we've learned yeah. like, be safe with that. <laughs> we've learned yes. how to like scope it as a parent. Um, that's so good. Yes. So that's exactly you, so the, the same thing. So the mechanics, I'm, I'm thinking back to the mechanics of a script. When, yes. when I see actors reading a screenplay, it's all centered and it's mm -hmm. all broken into lines. Yes. So would it be better for people to type their scripts in the teleprompter as lines with line breaks? Would that trigger, would that help? No, better to treat them as sentences. So as you learn, as you practice this technique, which allows your brain to understand that you can pause that yeah. you can trust your peripheral, that your yeah. brain is actually in, you are in total control of the words that are coming up. Yeah. yeah, you can actually take your time with it. So then even if the words start to move, you're still relying on the practice of the technique yeah. that you've done. So notice I keep yeah. saying practice, there has to be some practice. practice. practice, practice. It doesn't have to be a lot, like literally yeah. less than five minutes a day. So if you are somebody that reads in the morning or at night, read out loud. And practice that by bringing your eyes up loud. to a mirror. Great tip. Read out yeah. loud, right? We don't read it out, read it out loud and and practice that, or even record yourself in your own Zoom room so you can see. Yeah. Oh, I bopped there. Like you can. Yeah. You don't have to have. I mean, I'm happy to come back and talk to you guys about doing a way that we can do this as a group and and help yeah. people through it because for some people it really does kind of boggle the mind. Yeah. Even if you're a reader, an avid reader, you still may have an issue with being able to pull yourself away at the right time. But it, it really can be something that um, relaxes you and empowers you as well. Well, it's interesting so, because let's look at what's going on in the market. Most people are doing audiobooks and podcasts now. Yes. So they're hearing very good voiceover artists. And hopefully some of that is actually soaking in to draw from. Is you what can also hear is. people that read intros for people on their podcast yeah. that don't have a technique like this. Yeah. And you know that they're reading it. <laughs> You right? can pick it out. Yeah. You yeah. know that they're reading it. And and so when they're introducing someone, let me tell you, um, Jared Brick is the founder. And I mean, obviously, <laughs> there's like, yeah. hello, right? They're just yeah. going word for word, where if they had a technique like this, they would be able to look at something cold and trust that they can play with the words, so that they can have a little freedom with the language and know that if they just emphasize, like think of coming up and connecting at the end of a sentence, that they have that moment that they can pause. So I think if there's, start three, the next if there's three tips I'm hearing, don't bump. Yes, bopping, bopping is no good. Yeah. No <laughs> bopping, um, landing, really letting things land. Yes. And, then, yes. and then giving yourself the permission to pause. Yes. which I think for most people will feel naturally awkward at first, right? But it's so it feels so much better once you give yourself the freedom to do that. Yeah. So landing, the reason that that's important, you said, hey, what if there's three bullet points? So, yeah. um, okay, uh, I'll give you an example. I was on an interview early this morning talking about productivity hacks. And I said, well, yeah. there's three questions that I have people ask. So just imagine that I'm reading a teleprompter right now yeah. and the words are going by. I said, there are three questions that I believe, you know, are very helpful to ask as you start a task in your day. Number one, is this task something that will help me to get closer to my purpose? Number two, notice there was a land there. Yeah, right. there was a real pause. I had to think oh. about purpose. Oh, what is my purpose? Why am I even doing this? That's exactly what I want to happen. So if yeah. this is a script that you're using, you you actually are seeking people to repeat what you just said so that it lands. Yes. Number two, is this task better off done by someone else? Number three, so there's a pause there. Whereas a lot of times, you know, and number three, by the way, not to tease you, number three is, does the task have to be done at all? <laughs> so there, I have to finish the thought. So you guys go, oh, okay. That makes yeah. sense. Like, What's number three? <laughs> Leave you hanging. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that pause can sometimes be missed if you're just reading through the child. Number one, you know, A, B, C, D, E. Number two, yeah. blah, blah, blah. No, give it that moment so that you can actually feel that resonate with the person and and this helps the person on the other side of the screen feel like you are actually seeing them in a yeah. crazy way yeah yeah and they feel like because there's a way of connection where it's like oh what you're saying actually relates to me now and now i'm connecting with you over video yes. um and that's yes. the beauty of video because we we can connect we pick up see they say up to sixty thousand bits of information through video it's incredible i don't even quite get how there's that much coming through video but it you know the, the science says that 
Yes. Um, and and we yeah. have to realize that people are immensely distracted. There mm -hmm. are, you know, unbelievable amounts of, of information coming into our brain yeah. at any given moment. So whenever you are delivering a video to somebody, now if it's a tutorial, hopefully they have committed their attention to you. Yeah. But if it happens to be a marketing video, like something yeah. that's flipping through on social media, uh, it's super important to be able to make that connection with them because that's quickly, a thumb stopper. Quickly, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a thumb stopper, yeah. you know, and, and you want people to stop in their scroll yeah. and go, oh, and oh, that's I like that. the, the thumb stopper. It's like the oh, thumb stopper. I, like that. I haven't heard that term before. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Stop scrolling yeah. on me. When you get to me, exactly. stop scrolling. Yeah. That's, that's a great goal. That's a great goal. So yeah. as far as let's, let's talk about practice. How, what do you recommend for people to get started on practicing? I would say even five minutes a day five to minutes a day. Um, okay. five minutes a day. It doesn't, I mean, if you can do more, great, do more. If you happen yeah. to be an avid reader or you spend a lot of time, you know, reading books and, and you, you, we were just saying that there's um, uh, Matthew McConaughey's book that, that you finished. Yeah. I'm like, I want to read that. So I, yeah. if I get a new book, then I'm going to devote a, a few minutes, even 30 minutes to read it. Then I'll take five of those minutes and practice that technique. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do for you. I'm going to, I'm going to take his book home. I'm going to practice this. I'm going to send you a recording using yes. his book as the book. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And that'll be my That'd practice be book. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to give it to Andrew to him practice too. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, honestly, I have given this to my clients that were um, presidents of organizations and they go, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. I get so nervous that my hand, my palms start to sweat when I have yeah. to read, you know, whether it's the bylaws or the story of the organization or an intro for somebody it's yeah, they're yeah. up there reading in front of people and they go, it just feels so horrible because all the eyes are on them. They're feeling the need to connect. And so it's the same thing through video. You know, the yeah. teleprompter is moving in front of you. You want to connect. And yet there's this thing where your brain doesn't quite know what to focus on. What yeah. this technique does is allows you to focus on one thing at a time, the sentence Got it. Got and it. the landing and the connecting with what it is that you're saying so that Got the it. other person actually feels seen and heard. And it's crazy to think that you can do a video that can be watched by millions of people. But remember, they're all watching one at a time. It is yeah. a very private conversation. Yeah. Do you, when you, when you do video, just as a sidebar, do you, what do you picture when you're doing video? Do you picture a person, an audience? What do you picture when you're doing yes. video? I, I picture a person. So my, my best advice, I think my best tip ever since I was teaching television hosts before I even started teaching entrepreneurs or, or anyone else was um, really think of who it is that most needs the information delivered. So if yeah. I'm working with an entrepreneur, just say I'm working with a coach. Okay. Yeah. I will say, all right. I want you to think of one person you that know. you helped immensely and they came up to you and they said, thank you. And you had that moment of like realization of like, wow, I really did something amazing with this person yeah. and look at how grateful they are. And yeah. if you can actually come up with a, a, a situation like that, where you help someone and they actually said in front of you, thank you so much. And you have that. I have people revisit that in a sense memory recall exercise, which yeah. is an acting thing where you bring up all the senses around that moment. Yeah. And I said, remember what that feels like. Now open your eyes and talk through the lens straight to that person. Because that's a person, that, number yeah. one, it gets your confidence back up and remembers your body remembers, oh yeah, I can kick butt with what I do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you have the tone of voice and the intention that you had when you were speaking to that person in the first place. So it's very clear. So I'll have people and say to me, can I put it? Authenticity comes through, I feel like. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, that's my specialty is authentic communication. So that's why. Yeah. And I've had people say to me, can I put a picture of my son up on my, on my, uh, you know, my screen and Creator. talk to yeah, that. Yeah. And I'll stop and go, well, do you use a different tone of voice with your son than you do with your clients? I'm yeah. thinking probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I kind of hope so. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless kids are your clients, then maybe that's, yeah, you know, training maybe yeah. that would work. Yeah. So it's a very different intention, your intention and your, your landings and your focus will be so much clearer if you just right. commit Five I think minutes. if any year we've experienced this, it's been this year being on video is more than ever. Yes. I've got my seven-year-old to my 78-year-old mom on video now more than ever. And so yeah. everyone has to start learning these skills. Even my my children are learning it, um, how to be on Zoom, on their Zoom calls. Yes. So I think it's an amazingly important skill. It's only going to be more important into the future of the way we've kind of designed this global way to communicate. And mm -hmm. so we've got to... I guess what I'm saying is we don't really have a choice. We have to learn how to do this better. 
Yes. Yeah. And all these things, I mean, it's possible to do it better. And yeah. although it, you know, that word practice can make some people go, oh my gosh, you know, but it truly, I've discovered that if I can retrain, and I do believe you can retrain your brain, if I can retrain yeah. my brain to use certain language in certain ways, and I can retrain my brain to read and distribute information vocally in a very different fashion, and it becomes second nature to me, then yeah. it's so freeing. It's yeah. so th there's no stopping. Like I said, this technique, I was not necessarily the best actress in the audition. Mm -hmm. But I got the job a good bit of the time. Which is yeah. a, one of the most important things. So showing up and showing up in a way that people are going to respond to you yeah. is 90% of it, right? And then doing the work afterwards. Showing so up I want to remind people we've got all these great tools. We've got um, Sandra that you can reach out to um, when you need ex expert consulting and coaching around this area. We have the pitch of teleprompter, which means you can copy and paste or write anything in practice. Mm -hmm. and get comfortable on a teleprompter at any time, you can head over to pitchup.com. And then you have your smartphone, which is in all of our pockets with this amazing video ability to actually see yourself on camera. So what, what's a tip? A lot of clients that we've met um, over the years and people I've worked with, they're not comfortable looking at their video. And I always tell them it's a huge mistake. Yes, yeah. um, I, would, I get it. I wasn't comfortable looking at myself at all. And yeah my first national TV show, I didn't watch myself for four years. And I what? will tell you, I did not get better at my craft. Because of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they started to write more so what were you using complex the stuff for me. You, what was your feedback loop for four years then? Uh, I, if a director said, do this differently, I would do it differently, yeah. but I wouldn't watch, you know? And the best, wow. the, the best thing I realized was being able to look back and, and look at myself with kindness and so <laughs> what got me over that was having a tv hosting coach that uh actually made me sit down and watch everything and i first started watching myself like through my fingers you know to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, totally. well i and, would think of athletes athletes are known are known for this they watch the game right yes. after the game you gotta watch, watch the, the play team and they watch themselves and it's like guys if we're gonna play a bigger game we're gonna play more professionally you gotta do what the pros do Yep. And it's that's so practice, true. that stretching is practice. And then yep. rewatching what you did as the game and going yes. back and go, you know what? I could have probably done that better. I could have probably done that better. And yep. then going to, you know, someone like yourself or resources yep. and exactly. getting real, you know, support, getting support. I think that's the key is because we're not intuitively great at this stuff. No. And no. the one thing that I can say that I do is that positive reinforcement. So it's the same way I train my dogs and my horses and, you know, um, yeah. and talk to the marine biologists who were like, you know, really good friends of mine. I'm, I'm a wildlife conservationist. So I actually ran a radio show with wildlife conservationists and zoologists for a while. Crazy. No, oh, wow. in fact. Yeah. Wow. So um, positive behavioral reinforcement is the same thing that I would give my clients when we're looking at them watching themselves. So that yeah. whole process was I would wait until they, you know, something was great that they did on camera. And I go, Hey, stop. Do you remember what that felt like in your body? And they said, yeah, I do. I go, that was fantastic. So you can remember watching this, what it felt like to be in that moment. And they said, yes, it was great. I'm like, awesome. We want more of those. And I would ignore the things that were maybe not so great at the time and just build on the things that they were delivering well. So if they landed something really well, I would say, hey, that was a great landing right there. I'd stop the video and go, do you remember what that felt like? Yes. Awesome. Keep Let's going. More of that back in. Yeah. yeah. And I always yeah. try to remind people like your body does not know the difference between excitement and nervousness. <laughs> your, your body is chemically doing the exact same thing if you're nervously like not sure of yourself or you're excited. Right. It's the exact yeah. same physical response. So if we can train ourselves to be comfortable with that response, you can use yes. that more positive side versus the insecure side to right. present. Yeah. 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 So that was something yeah, when I can... learned that I don't I can't recall who I learned that from, but um, when I did, that was a big like aha moment of like sure. my body doesn't know the difference. Why do I care then? Like exactly. if my body's having the same response, let's be positive and excited versus nervous and insecure. Be more yeah. in control of it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so we, we should talk again because I do have a lot of techniques that can help the, yeah. the body be grounded so, what, what, so that excitement people, actually gets the controlled. Next stage? If they were going to um, work with you or get more coaching, what would mm -hmm. be the next stage for them after this? Oh, just reach out to me and, you know, okay. set up a, a conversation. Where, where, what's the best website for them to do that on? 
sandradrobinson.com. So it's my name.com. Okay, we'll put it right at the bottom yeah. of the screen for everybody. There you go. That's, That's the best thing to and, do. And yeah. you're centrally located in Texas. So you're I in know. central time zone. Yeah. And, but I have clients uh, all over the world. So we work just like we're uh, doing here, you know? Yeah. So I have actually trained people that have never heard their voice in a microphone before to go and just command a keynote at a conference in a huge stage. And we did nearly all of it. 99% of the practice was done just like this using Zoom. And then on the final day, I did show up at the conference and we actually walked her through everything that we had practiced on the big stage and she rocked it. So, That's you know, awesome. it's, it's amazing what we can do as far as training and, and practice and, and getting better and communicating better and authentically. And so anything I can awesome. do to help. Well, we are going to um, create a promotion code for people. So if they use the code Sandra D, they get a free video with pitch yeah. Um yeah. That means they watch this video and they wait until the end of the video to get the code and they got some of the insights. So I'm going to rewatch our video because I'm going to be editing it. And that way it's great too, because I, um, not only am I rewatching it, I'm, I'm really focused on it. So I, it really lands. And then we can give this back to our community and our clients. Um, so I just want to thank you for your time. That was so insightful. And yeah. I got my practice, which was fun. And it was actually fun. It was nervous and I could feel it, but it was fun. And so yeah. I'm going to really be working on these things. Yeah, I, I, I trust that you will. And you did great. And again, it was brave of you to, you know, to go, I'm going to try this. I've never yeah. done it before. And for anybody who uh, has never tried a teleprompter before, head over to pitchup.com. You can try it for free right now on our website. And we're going to have information to connect with Sandra D. Robinson if you'd like professional consulting with her. And thanks for checking out today's episode. We're excited to support everybody. Thank you, Sandra. All right.